Hey guys, VFX Bro here, and this is a After Effects intro template tutorial that I'm going to walk you through today. It's going to be a mixture, sort of a hybrid of a how-to slash actual tutorial. I'm not going to take you through the entire process of making the template because a lot of it is a little bit repetitive, but I'm going to show you what you need to know and how to take this template and learn from it. So first thing you're going to do is open up the template that you can download for free on vfxbro.com. It's going to convert to the version of After Effects that you have. And then it's going to say this project contains one missing effect, plop. If you don't have that installed, it'll still work, so don't worry about that. Looking online, I saw this cool Bill Gates animation and I decided to make a template from it for you guys to learn from and enjoy. So you can see we have these cool gears moving around. Almost all of this was done using shape layers. Now if you want to really understand shape layers, how to make them, how to use them most efficiently, you can check out my shape layers training on vfxpro.com. But I'm going to show you how I use shape layers here to make this cool template. I'm going to show you some of the different techniques that we go through and dissect this. Now first thing we have is obviously the background and if we go into our background here, so I want to show you how we make our backgrounds here really quick. I'm going to turn this off and we make a single solid layer and we just chose this color here and then we hit command D to duplicate it and then we cycle through our ellipse tool here. We set this to a subtract mode and then we're going to set it to a color burn mode. And then we can hit M twice for mask feathering and just feather this out here. And there we have our background look. Okay, so let's go back here to our composition. And what I did here was I just adjusted the hue. In this template you can use this also and just move this around to adjust the hue to one that you would desire. You can also adjust the saturation if you'd like. But let's go ahead and leave this here for now. So let's go let's move here into the machine. This is the actual machine here that we have. This is the this is the main composition where most of the work was done. And most of what we see here are circle shapes. So I'm going to go through how we made one of these circles coming around here. Let's go ahead and turn all of this off. And we're just going to, with nothing selected, make a circle. So I'm going to drag this out, hold down shift, and then I'm going to hit my space bar to move it around. I'm holding down my shift and space bar. I'm going to move it here into the center. And now I have the shape layer here selected. I'm going to turn off the fill so we have no fill. And I'm going to turn on the stroke. And again, if this is a lot of this is going over your head, you might want to check out the shape layers training. And now I can bring out the edge of this right here. And now I'm going to go here into my shape layer effects. I'm going to add a trim paths effect. And I can go here and animate the start and the end. So I'm going to bring my start to 100%, set a keyframe and play through this here and have it end there. And now we have this cool animation of that spinning around. So we see a lot of different variations of that in the in the template and so let's take a look here at what we've got going on. So we have all these circles spinning around and one thing that we notice that we want to do when setting this up is that at first we have these little circles growing but then everything starts to get smaller and so rather than setting keyframes for everything to make it get smaller we just took all of these different layers and parented them to our null object that we called shrink everything. So if I bring my scale property up here we can see that at this point right here we started at 100% and then here we had it down to 24%. So with everything keyframed to that we can see that it all gets smaller and we don't have to worry about adding keyframes for everything. We can just parent it all to this one scale and it's all scaling proportionally and it's all scaling into the center. If I were to take this layer and take my anchor point and move it somewhere else like over here it would change where it all shrinks to and I don't like that as much so I'm going to control so I'm going to undo that so we use that null object to shrink it all so let's go ahead and see how we made this gear because this is our most complicated shape layer so in order to make this gear I'm going to first create a circle 
and I have a circle here. I'm going to bring it into the center. I'm going to turn on my fill and turn off the stroke. And let's make the fill the same color as this guy. And we have that. And now I'm going to add onto the shape layer another shape layer. So I'm going to cycle through until I get my star tool. And I'm going to drag the star tool out and make sure that it's centered up with this guy. Again, I'm holding down space. And so now we have it in the center there, or at least close to it. And I'm going to go to my points here. I'm going to bring up my points up really high. Somewhere around there looks good. Now I'm going to take my inner radius and bring it up just like that. So we are already seeing some sort of gear attributes here in our shape layer. And now I'm going to take this initial ellipse here. We can see that it's not quite centered up. We've, we've gotten off track a little bit here. So we're going to take our polystar tool and bring it up here so that it's centered. There we go. And take our original ellipse. We have it centered in there. And we can make this into one group. So we're going to add a new group here and take both of these and drag them into that group. And now with our group selected, we're going to add a merge paths feature. So we have a merge paths feature and we're going to set it to subtract. And now we can see that we have that empty area in the middle. And we could take our ellipse, go to our transform properties and bring up the scale and adjust it as we see fit. And now we can take our ellipse and duplicate it. Hit Command D. And let's drag it outside of the group. And now we can take this ellipse here and go to our transform and scale it in so that it's smaller. So now we have another ellipse that is not being affected by our first group merge paths effector. And we have our own ellipse here by itself. Now we want to add these pieces coming out of our gear. So we're going to duplicate this ellipse here. And I'm going to actually turn off everything besides this ellipse so we can see what's going on. We have this ellipse and I'm going to turn on my stroke. Make it the same color as the center. And we're only seeing that ellipse and we're going to turn off the fill. We don't want the fill. And I'm going to go here into my stroke and I'm going to add dashes. So now we have all of these dashes here. And I'm going to hit plus here on my dash. And now I can change the width of my dash. I want them to be pretty skinny, but I'm going to add gaps. So now there's going to be fewer. And I'm going to move this around until we have around five. So something like that looks good. So I've adjusted my dash width as well as the gap and I can offset them if I need to but I don't think I need want to worry about that right now and so we have that and I can now take my ellipse and I have here the separate scale properties I could scale this down a little bit and but before I mess with that too much I'm going to turn these other layers back on see what we've got I'm going to go back here into my ellipse and bring up the scale so that it reaches the outside. And there we have it. So that's how we created our most complicated shape. And if we want to add a rotation to all of this, we can simply go here into our rotation. And remember, this is our transform for the entire shape layer. So I'm going to alt click on the rotation to set an expression. I'm going to type in time times 100 and now we can see that it's spinning around and let's look at the only keyframes we've added oh no keyframes at all have been added and we get all of that another thing that we want to look at here is the use of track mats here let's take a look at this shape that we had we had this piece that came here on the bottom right on the bottom left here and it's a kind of a weird shape 
And the way that we got this was by using a track mat. So this piece here, let's take a look at, let's take a look under the hood. Nothing's going on. If we turn off our track mat, we can see that it's just a half circle on its own. We added a trim path to cut off these edges and made our stroke super thick. But we used our alpha mat inverted to get this animation on. And so here what we did was we simply created three circles. I'm going to turn on the track mat so we can see what we did. We created three circles and then we just took our big circle and subtracted it. So what's happening is the alpha mat of this brown circle is being defined as the opposite of the layer directly above it, which is just this layer right here. So we animate the size of this and bring it down and then we're able to use that to create this somewhat complicated shape here. And it's relatively easy, fast, efficient, and it's not too messy either. So that's how we did shapes like that. And we had the same effect here with this guy where we get this right on here and again it's being defined by this circle mat on the outside which was actually not even animated, it was just used to define the shape of the layer underneath. For this AECS6 sign here, plopping out, we just simply used the plop preset, which you can download on vfxbro.com. We can see here that we just simply drag that on here and then change the birth point to this position here in the center and that allowed it to plop out from the center. We can turn off our motion blur here to make it go a little bit faster and we get an organic feel of that plopping out. And then finally we had this overall shine that came over this animation, gave it a nice little touch as though it were reflective. I'm gonna show you how I did that really quick. I simply created a new shape layer here. I'm gonna create a nice square, give it a white fill, turn off the stroke, then I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees, bring it up here, hit P for position, and drag this all the way over here. And let's have it end right before the other one comes on. And then just drag it all the way across here so that it's going across. And what I'm going to do here is take this layer, the machine, duplicate it bring it on top of this shape layer and I'm going to have this shape layer set to the alpha mat of the machine. So now it became invisible because it's being defined by this alpha mat which is just a nice big circle and now we can see that it's coming across just like that. And we probably don't want it to start until right here so I'm going to alt right bracket at that point Then it comes across and then it's done alt right bracket and I'm going to set this to a overlay blend mode. And then I'm going to make sure that I have my motion blur turned on. And there we have it. Really simple. So that's a basic overview of how we achieve this effect. If you want to learn more about how we create shape layers to achieve this sort of animation efficiently and effectively. Go and check out the shape layer training on vfxbro.com. I've got a lot more free templates and training to come here on motion graphics. So look out for that. This has been VFX Bro with a After Effects intro template tutorial. Until next time.